The purpose of this channel is to make the worlds of M&A as well as private equity more accessible. Let's start today by getting a general understanding of the current market consensus. As we all know, interest rates are going up, inflation is going up as well, which makes everything more expensive. Important for us, it also makes borrowing money more expensive. If that is the case, deal flow is going to be going down. So according to PitchBook, global M&A activity has fallen by 29.8% in deal value from the peak seen in Q4 2021. Even though this is a massive drop, some M&A activity has still been happening. So most of the money in the past 90 days has been invested in technology, media and telecommunication, followed by manufacturing and industrials. While these were quite broad statements about the market, I thought it would be interesting to go through one or two deals per week in detail. The transaction I chose today is the acquisition of Abiomed by Johnson & Johnson. So let's first look at the company profiles. I think that most of you guys know Johnson & Johnson being a huge pharmaceutical player. They have a market capitalization of 459 billion euros total revenue of about 89 billion euros and important uh, for comparisons later on an EV EBITDA multiple for 14.83. This means that the company is trading at 14.83 times their EBITDA. Looking at the second company, Abiomed, this company is a bit smaller so their market cap is 17.3 billion euros, total revenue of about 1 billion and a EV EBITDA multiple of 55, which is nearly three times as high as the EV EBITDA multiple of Johnson & Johnson. So what is Abiumid actually doing? They're a medtech company that gets most of their revenue stream by selling a product called an impeller heart pump. So they're, um, uh, they're, um, they're working in the cardiovascular field. So, Let's try to understand the rationale behind this acquisition. So Johnson & Johnson states that this transaction broadens J&J's position as a growing cardiovascular innovator. Second statement is from their CEO, which, who says that the addition of Abiomed is an important step in the execution of our strategic priorities and our vision for the new J&J focused on pharmaceuticals and medtech. So clearly this is a strategic move by the company. So let's now have a look at the key data of this transaction. So Johnson & Johnson is willing to pay 16.6 billion, including debt but stripping away cash for Abiomed. This translates into about 380 euros per share outstanding. Also important is that Abiomed shareholders will also receive up to $35 a share in cash if certain milestones are met. I think another important aspect here is that Abio made shares surge of about 51% after this transaction was announced. And we're going to see in a short while why this is the case. But let's first look at how Johnson Johnson wants to pay for this uh, transaction. So they expect to fund the transaction through a combination of cash on hand and short term financing. So I believe that. Um, they have been sitting on a lot of cash due to the COVID pandemic where selling vaccines has been uh, quite profitable, I suppose. And they want to invest their cash on hand now on uh, in new projects such as uh, this acquisition of Abiomed, which is, as we said before, in line with their strategic aim to um, become a forefront player in, in the med tech industry. So also important or interesting is the price movement after the announcement. So as we can see, Abiumet's shares were trading at 252, this is in dollars, so 252 dollars before the announcement, and jumped by about 50% to 377 after the acquisition was announced. This is a jump of about 50% um, and this translates into the control premium we saw here. 51% um, as we saw here, so this is the control premium that um, Johnson & Johnson paid for Abiomed, which is in my opinion quite high. So let's have a look at um, what the market thinks about this. 
and we can see what the market thinks about this by looking at the share price of Johnson & Johnson. Um, before the acquisition was announced, the share price was at about 174 and went down up until 170 and is currently require, uh, re um, recovering a little bit to 171. So the drop is at about 2.5%, I would say. So the market, even though so it's normal that after an acquisition, the uh, share price of the acquiring company is going down by a little bit, but I would say it didn't go about down by too much. So the market believes that it is a good acquisition. Um, and or won't affect um, Johnson Johnson's revenue stream and or balance sheets badly. Um, I suppose that's because Johnson Johnson has a revenue of about 88 billion and um, Abio made of 1 billion. So the acquisition or the acquisition price was 60 billion and doesn't seem to be a very big um, acquisition for Johnson and Johnson. Let's now have a look at if this was a good or bad acquisition. So what are the what are the benefits of this acquisition? According to Johnson & Johnson, it diversifies their portfolio with a leadership platform and heart failure and recovery. Furthermore, benefits patients by advancing mission to make heart recovery the global standard of care. Okay. Expands market opportunity through a robust pipeline of technologies and clinical studies. So this is um, good because they get new clients which they can sell their product to. And um, I suppose that they'll also be going to do some upselling with other Johnson & Johnson products as well. And finally, it accelerates near and long term sales and earnings growth. This is important. So the deal in the beginning, I think, is dilutive. Uh, but after a while, so after a while, it's good. In two years, it's going to become accretive by, uh, by approximately five cents in 2024 and increasing accretive thereafter. So this is um, according to, um, in other words, according to Johnson Johnson, this deal creates value for shareholders. Now let's have a look at the opinion article of the Financial Times that is about this deal. So the author says that the 51% premium for Abiumet's closing price on Monday um, is believed to be quite high um, because that still puts the company on an EV EBITDA multiple over 58. This is rich given J&J's comments that any potential cost savings would be very modest. So this guy thinks that um, this is quite a big multiple for, EV, uh, for Abiumet. Also um, interesting is the comparison to Boston Scientific and Edward Life Science, which are both large cardiovascular businesses and they command an average a multiple of around 22, which is less than half of the multiple that Abiumet is currently commanding with, when we have, what did he say? Um, I think it was 58, yes, uh, 58. Okay, so this transaction seems to be a strategic one. Um, from a financial perspective, I mean, it does make sense, but it seems to be very, very expensive. I also had a look at the capital IQ data um, and for the past six years, this has this transaction commanded one of the highest multiples within the healthcare industry. So we'll see in the future how this plays out. So I hope that this video was insightful to you guys. Um, please let me know if there is something I should have covered uh, on this deal. Is there something that was wrong? Is something that was right? If you want to discuss it, uh, tell me in the comments. And um, yeah, this was it from me and I'll see you again next week.